Sunscreen is the most important step in a skincare routine, so please tell me why it is that in 2024, I still meet people who say, I just can't find a sunscreen that works for me. To that I say, Poppycock, we are gonna find you a sunscreen today. Today's video is going to be all about sunscreens for sensitive skin, and let me preface this video by saying, I am someone with sensitive skin. <laughs> I have decades of stories of me reacting to sunscreens going back to, no joke, I've talked about this before, going back to my childhood and just crying when my mom put sunscreen on me because it stung so badly. Here we are in 2024 and I currently have so many sunscreens in front of me that all work for me. Just to keep things low risk, all of these are fragrance free and essential oil free, but these are not limited to only mineral filters. Why stop there when realistically a lot of filters are non-irritating? And real quickly, let me give you an outline for this video. We're gonna talk about what sunscreen filters mean. We're gonna run through some mineral sunscreens and then through some chemical sunscreen options. With timestamps and links in the description box below as always, let's get into today's video. Part one, let's talk about sunscreen filters. Now, what does this even mean? Well, if you're in the US, it's actually pretty straightforward for us. You will notice right on our packaging something that says drug facts and then lists out percentages of certain ingredients. Those, my friend, are our sunscreen filters. And these are the ingredients that are responsible for making your sunscreen function as a way to protect you from the damage of the sun's rays. There are, in general, two categories. You have your mineral filters and your chemical filters. In a video about skin sensitivity, we are absolutely going to start by talking about mineral filters, mineral or inorganic. This is the category that a lot of people with sensitive skin turn to. This has overall worked out for me, but there are some things you need to know. Let's break them down individually, starting with kind of the more popular mineral filter, zinc oxide. What absolutely perplexes me about zinc oxide is that sometimes I see people say things like, why do these companies make sunscreens that are so drying? Why do they put a white cast into them? <laughs> Without realizing that this is what zinc oxide looks like. Zinc oxide is white. <laughs> zinc oxide is astringent. <laughs> so it's truly not that these companies are adding white coloring. It's not that these companies are adding anything drying. It's that zinc oxide is these properties. <laughs> And this is a bit of a problem because while this might be fine for somebody who is <laughs> extremely pale skinned and perhaps a bit oily, they might even like those astringent properties, this does not work for everyone. Some people have a deeper skin tone, some people have dry skin, and that all makes zinc oxide difficult. And listen, this is a shame because zinc oxide actually is a great ingredient that protects against both UVB and UVA, and even may have benefits for folks that deal with acne. So let's talk about what brands might do to make that ingredient something that everyone can use. First of all, the percentage is something that could be altered. This ends up being kind of a controversial conversation. It is not linear that you get a higher SPF protection when the zinc oxide is at a higher percentage. Instead, that final SPF is affected by formulation as well as using ingredients like uh, boosters. This is something I would not have known about without Lab Muffin here on YouTube, so I will absolutely link her channel below. But when it comes to boosters, you have certain ingredients that act very similarly to sunscreen ingredients, the most notable of which is butyl octyl salicylate. This one looks and behaves like a chemical filter that we'll talk about later. This booster ingredient has made it so that companies are now starting to really increase that SPF protection. Here's one from Bubble. This is their SolarMate SPF 40. It has 12% zinc oxide. This is the non-tinted version. I mean, you can see it still has a white cast because remember, zinc oxide is white, but less so. And all these companies can say that these are 100% mineral sunscreens. They can even do the whole, we're not using chemical filters because those are bad. And yet at the end of the day, these products are behaving a lot like hybrid sunscreens. More on that later. Another method that might be used to make your sunscreen something that more people can use is 
to add a bit of a tint to it. This is Live Tinted's. I think that this is actually one of the most interesting options because I put a lot here. <laughs> because this one has a very yellowish orange. Why did I say yellow? That's an orange tint. Sometimes the brain to mouth communication just, it could be better. So you can see that actually blends out really nicely, even though this product is 18.23% zinc oxide. This is an Indian American owned brand, by the way. It may not be a product that works on the deepest of skin tones, but I have a feeling this will work on more skin tones than some of the other options. Remember when I said zinc oxide is an astringent ingredient? This gets tricky too, because you might have seen people saying things like uh, they use a mineral sunscreen and then their skin looks really greasy, it looks really oily. That's the opposite of what we'd expect. But these sunscreens are not zinc oxide at 100%, are they? They are using zinc oxide in a formulation where most likely the cosmetic chemists who made these products are trying to make them uh, something that everyone can use. So you can't have this very drying product in the end. You want something that is comfortable for people. And it does seem like this is a challenge for formulators and it's arguably one of the benefits of these SPF boosters. I don't just hate the fact that they're added into products. I dislike the companies claim they have 100% mineral sunscreens when they have these filters that act like chemical sunscreens. I think most of us are on the same page here. Realistically, lowering the amount of this astringent ingredient, adding in some boosters that are not astringent can make for a much more comfortable formula to wear. And I feel like we're really seeing that in some of these newer releases. You know, the Tatcha release was phenomenal, very expensive, but phenomenal. The new Kopari, this brightest day, sheer mineral sunscreen, Sunscreen reminds me a lot of the Tatcha in the way that it sits on your skin without feeling too drying. This does have an illuminating finish as a heads up, but I really am happy with how it feels. It is a non-drying formula in spite of having an astringent ingredient in it. So my bottom line with zinc oxide is I do think it's a good choice. I see why it's where a lot of people with sensitive skin do start, but know a few things. You know, know about these astringent properties. Know that companies are adding boosters. Know this because if you are running into issues with some zinc oxide based sunscreens, maybe knowing what to look for in other products might help you to still be able to find a zinc oxide based sunscreen that works for you. Let's move on to our other mineral filter, titanium dioxide. Now, I just want to be honest with you all. There is some very conflicting information about titanium dioxide out there. What I would say is it seems to be broad spectrum, meaning that it covers both UVA and UVB protection. However, there's debate on how well it works against all forms of UVA. This is contested, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put some information, some citations in the description box below. You can feel free to form your own opinion. I've seen dermatologists say it's a great filter and others have said not so much. As somebody who leans more towards the middle ground in everything but politics, I feel that titanium dioxide is probably a good everyday filter to use. I wouldn't rely on it alone for the beach. That's a real middle of the road take and still allows me to use, frankly, a sunscreen that I quite like. Here's an example of a broad spectrum SPF 60 product from Vici that has 14.8% titanium dioxide. I like this one. I don't find it as drying as zinc oxide, which is practically to be expected. Although it, it is really funny that we went through that explanation of butyl octyl salicylate and look at that 100% mineral sunscreen. Yeah, but is it really? And with that, we are moving into talking about the chemical, AKA organic filters. What you need to know is that there are a lot of these. We definitely do not have the time to go over every last one of them in today's video, but this is specifically where things get tricky in terms of the US versus the world. Earlier in this video, I talked about the drug facts panel. That is because in the US, sunscreens are regulated as a drug, whereas internationally, sunscreens are considered to be a cosmetic. So as new filters have come out, they've been able to go into products at a much faster rate in many countries versus in the United States of America, where we are decades behind on filters. From the filters that we do have, 
I run into a problem as someone with sensitive skin. And again, this is the point of the video, so I really want to talk about this category. Years and years ago, I thought that I just couldn't use any chemical filters, but when I got into it and started really experimenting with sunscreens, I realized I can use a lot more chemical sunscreens, chemical filters, than I thought. What I can't use are avobenzone and oxybenzone, and this creates a real problem for me in the U.S because these are our most common UVA filters. Remember that broad spectrum means protects you from UVB as well as UVA, so I just basically cannot buy a purely chemical sunscreen in the US. I've said in a lot of videos that this is because I'm allergic to these two, but it actually turns out these are kind of commonly irritating, so it's difficult for me to tell you whether I have a true allergy or whether I simply react to these two. What I can tell you is, whichever it is, it feels the same. <laughs> I get the same burning, I get the same stinging, then down the road I end up with more breakouts because my skin was irritated. However, there are, again, a lot of chemical filters, and I can use a lot of them. Octosalate is that ingredient that is very similar to butyloctyl salicylate. And it's fine, we have no issues at all, which perfectly makes sense because I can use all of these uh, you know, 100% mineral sunscreens. <laughs> Octanoxate is another chemical filter that is pretty gentle, which means I can use a hybrid. This is the Elta MD UV Clear Broad Spectrum SPF 46, and it uses both zinc oxide and octanoxate. So it's not that I can never buy a sunscreen in the US that contains some of our chemical filters, it's just that I have to be careful. I have to keep an eye out for AVO and oxybenzone. And that brings us to our final part of the video, which is international sunscreens. Now, this is tricky. This is a tricky category. You cannot walk into Ulta and buy the viral Beauty of Joseon sunscreen. You cannot walk into Ulta and buy the viral Skin 1004 sunscreen, even though Ulta now carries Skin 1004, because these products are regulated as a cosmetic, there's no drug facts panel, in addition to our government's outdated requirements, which includes animal testing. And listen, none of these companies want to do it. It's very frustrating because we actually know that these filters are better than what we have in the US. It's just regulations and red, red tape are holding us back. Please keep in mind that this is another absolutely huge topic that I'm trying to condense down for this video, but I do still want to talk about some products that have really worked wonders for me. You've probably seen me rave about the Purito Daily Soft Touch Sunscreen. First of all, while we are not focusing on other ingredients in today's video, you can't, you can't see past it with this formulation. You've got all these barrier boosting ingredients. This is a nice moisturizer. But in addition to that, this contains a blend of filters, including Tenosaur M, which is such an interesting, almost hybrid-like filter. It's hypoallergenic, maybe a good choice for pregnancy. It's just a gentle filter all around, but because it is a hybrid, it may leave a white cast depending on your skin tone. That said, this formulation is one of the most comfortable sunscreens that I've ever encountered in my entire life. I've talked about this before. If you feel like sunscreens uh, make your skin look worse at the end of the day, please try this one. <laughs> Because no joke, this sunscreen, every time I wear it, my skin looks better at the end of the day. This is kind of my reparative sunscreen option. And I do want to say, I don't think it's the only option. I do think it's probably part of the reason why the Round Lab sunscreen was so viral. Be careful with this, though, as birch is actually kind of a common allergen, so hence why I'm sticking with the Purito in terms of recommendations. But if you do have a deeper skin tone, you should know that you are not limited to sunscreens with Tenosorb M. There are other formulations out there. The most recent one is this new formulation from Colmar. There seems to be a another variant of this from the House of Her. This is a Cosmax product, so it seems that both Colmar and Cosmax have formulas that 
do not use Tinnosorb M. So both of these are very fast to apply. This option right here from Pcalm, their water barrier sun cream, I find this to be the most non-irritating, most reparative in this category. I still personally do think Purito does a little more for repairing my skin, but again, this one might leave a little bit of a white cast. This one will not. Now, keep in mind, again, because these can't be sold in the US, you will have to go online, you will have to import these for personal use. They just can never be stocked in a store. But you do have options for international purchases. I made a video a few months ago comparing Yes Style, Style Vana, and Style Korean. I'm actually planning on updating that before the year ends. So many things have changed. I want to add a bonus section into this video. I want to talk a bit about eye sensitivity. This might even be a more popular topic than just general face sensitivity in sunscreens. Funny enough, I, I feel like I have such sensitive eyes, but this isn't a huge problem for me and I'm perplexed by it. <laughs> I don't know if it's because, again, I avoid those two filters that I talked about earlier or if it has to do with personal preferences. What I will say is I feel like when I use a little bit more of a thicker sunscreen in terms of texture, that seems to really help with preventing eye irritation. Not to mention that the issue may again be those old school chemical filters and maybe it's even butyloctyl salicylate. Again, because this isn't regulated as a sunscreen filter, how are we supposed to know? <laughs> More of these issues of the complexity of this butyloctyl salicylate and other boosters situation. I have a rec for you and this is actually a very recent purchase for me. This is the Naked Sundays Collagen Glow 100% Mineral Sunscreen SPF 50. As far as I understand, this is a brand that does SPF 50, period. Nothing under SPF 50. And this also is unquestionably the thickest texture I've ever encountered in a sunscreen. It's actually free from boosters, so note that it does have a little bit of a higher level of zinc oxide in this formula, but this is completely non-irritating to my eyes. And again, I, I think part of this has to do with both the formula, but also just the general texture. This is not one that is going to drip into my eyes because of how thick it feels. Again, keep in mind, my goal here isn't to recommend specific products. At the same time, this is best in category. So at the very least, I do want to say uh, I do recommend looking for thicker textures. It's been tried and true, for me at least. But my friends, that's it for today's video. I hope this was helpful. I, I really hope that this helps to explain the quirks with a lot of our sunscreen filters, why it is that certain sunscreens feel drying, why they leave a white cast, etc. Hopefully it's not too overwhelming. I will include links in the description box below to some of these products. Feel free to leave some thoughts in the comment section. If you have sensitive skin, what are the sunscreens that have worked for you? It would be so interesting to see if we all kind of gravitate towards the same page. We'll see, we'll see. And if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. I hope you all have a wonderful week and I will see you all next time.